帝国騎士ベルナ出撃準備完了だ全軍継承中央突破だ死なったあの日から守る覚悟を持ったこの大陸に平和と安寧をもたらすため共に戦ってほしい私の先決でしか。私のこの苦しみを和らげることはできないのよ消えなさい軟弱者<笑>この力<笑>私は味わいたいもっと多くの勝利を味わう Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to talk about the way to build Werner and Hilda. So, I'm going to begin with Werner, who will be a very, very brief coverage, because Werner is basically an Empire and Reincarnation SSR Leticia. That's basically the best summary of him. You need Rosalia and Leon to unlock his bonds, the fourth and fifth bond. And his 3C allows him to do some stance shifts. And his best PvP stance in there is the speed stance, where he gets plus three mobility. And he, if he attacks an enemy after having moved four tiles, he will attack first. He also has a strike stance, which is very similar to Leon's talent. So for every tile you move, you get 3% increased damage, and you can get a maximum of 15% increased damage. So if you move five tiles or more, you got the 15%. He also has one final stance, I think it was like a defense stance or something. I mean, why would you want your Werner to tank a hit? I didn't understand it, so I mostly ignored that one. Okay. His best soldier in general is the Mechanical Knights, because Mechanical Knights allow you to basically get additional mobility, potentially. As long as there's a tile you're moving through that has terrain, you get a free movement through it. And so, Mechanical Knights, increasing its mobility is by far the best. This is also very important because he can actually ignore guard strike an enemy if he moves 10 tiles. So, as long as you have the mechanical knights and his talent and all that, you can probably move 10 tiles and then launch a strike that will ignore the enemy tank's guard skill. In terms of gear, then, his gear is ultimately very, very similar to Leon's. Uh, you're going to want the breezing chant because of that whole 10 movement thing. And in terms of gear wise, a seal guardian or a blue star would be his best weapon for maximum damage output. I put here an arcane battle garb for his armor because in the on the off chance you fail to one shot the enemy, the arcane battle garb can do a fixed damage hit after the battle. Fury of Tear is his best helmet, as with almost every other DPS character that can equip it. Right, the ten percent extra damage is always useful. And for the accessory, I listed Twilight Star. This is because it allows you to do fixed damage before combat. So meaning if the enemy is not immune to fixed damage, Twilight Star can break things like Last Rites and Shrine Maidens. So that makes it right there a very important piece of gear for Warner, especially since he can once again do an ignore guard strike. And that's basically Warner in a nutshell. Uh, other than that, it's just you know, use him for mobility buffing the rest of your party, and he's just a pretty solid hero all around. So then we move on to talk about Hilda. All right. So Hilda's basic role is a very hard to kill tank. That's more or less it, right? Just like any other tank, she's there to tank hits, and she is bonded by Werner and Florentia. So you're going to need both Werner and Hilda on this banner if you want to get and use Hilda right away. Right? Florentia is also kind of difficult to get as a side note. You can basically say Hilda is Landius 2.0 because she is more or less an improved Landius. That that's really just sums her up. Okay? Class-wise, she is Cavalry and Lancer, just like Landius. Right? Faction-wise, she is different there. She's part of Reincarnation, Empire, and Strategic Masters. Note how 
uh, reincarnation is becoming a more and more popular faction, and we all know that Empire is going to become the next dominant faction. So the fact that she's part of these factions means that she is going to be the next generation tank, if you will. Her 3C skill allows her to change between her Lancer and Cavalry class. So it's a very interesting one. So it basically changes her class from Lancer to Cavalry or Cavalry to Lancer so that depending on the enemies you're facing, you can change into the class that counters them best. A very, very, this is one of the things that really makes her much more unique compared to Landius, who is stuck in either the Lancer or the Cavalry class. She also has, uh, the free C is obviously a guard skill, just like Landius is as a side note, but it also applies an immunity to mobility debuffs effect. So there's a passive to it that makes you immune to mobility debuffs. And finally, her regular guard skill, it actually targets like the two, two tiles in front of her, and it applies terrain effects into them. It's like a 2 by 3 block in front of her. Or is it 2 by 5 I can't quite remember. But in any case, it applies terrain effects on those tiles. And what it is, is any enemy that steps into those tiles uh, cannot act again. So I think that's very, very difficult to use properly, frankly speaking. So you're better off running her 3C. But it is interesting that her regular guard skill, the 2 cost guard skill, does something like that. Another important part of her talent is that her talent stops crit hits. Right. So there are a lot of assassins that rely on crit hits to successfully kill the enemy. In particular, Hiei needs crit hits to apply a lot of things. Zerida, in order to do the maximum damage she needs, needs a crit hit. So the fact that the talent stops a crit hit right there makes it a hard counter to both Hiei and Zerida. And probably a hard counter to Sigma too, actually. Uh, for example, anyone who has a Crystal Beasting, uh, or Crystal Stinger, right? The Crystal Stinger effect is that you do 10% more crit damage. So that part is completely disabled. So it's a big thing. Um, and finally, she actually has a one cost skill that will allow her to counter attack versus physical range attacks. So, and it allows you to counter against physical range attacks at up to 3 range. So the only way you can avoid a counter attack from her is if you're using either a magic attack at 2 plus range, or you're using like a physical attack at 4 range. There's not very many characters who can do that. All right. So characters like Illustrial, if Illustrial chooses to attack Hilda, she will definitely 100% get counter attacked. Just an interesting point there. Yeah. Overall, it's interesting because Basically, her talent has the revival effect. So unlike Landius that is forced to bring Indomitable, Hilda can actually choose to bring a one-cost skill. And she does have a pretty interesting choice of them. Right? She has the counterattack against physical range attack one that decreases physical range damage to her. She has one that will decrease physical melee damage to her. And then she has Ram for the third one-cost skill. So. She has a wide variety of these one-cost skills. You're going to pick the best one based on the situation. So now let's talk about Hilda's talent in greater detail. So the first effect is that it negates a single fatal attack, restoring 20 to 50% of her hit points, and it can activate once per battle. So the revival effect with hit point restoration. It's worth noting that it's a pretty big hit point restoration too, right? 50% of her hit points. The second effect is that this one's very similar to Landius. If the unit has two or more buffs, damage taken is decreased by 10, 15, 20, and 25%. And she also adds 5, 8, 11, or 15% of her attack into her defense and magic defense. So this one triggers by just having two buffs. Unlike Landius, that needs to be within three blocks, two or three blocks, of an ally. So it's an interesting one, that's for sure. And then the third effect is what I previously mentioned. When one ally is attacked in battle within two or three blocks of her, then the attacking unit is prevented from scoring a critical hit for this attack. And this effect has a three, two, or one turn cooldown, depending on her star level. Very, very useful effects overall. Like, they're amazing uh, talent effects, which makes her a great tank in general. So now let's talk about the bond requirements of Hilda. Her first two bonds are very, very easy to get. The second bond simply needs you to reach level 30 with Hilda. 
The third bond simply requires you to upgrade Hilda to the Royal Knights. The fourth bond and fifth bond are the problems. The fourth bond needs you to get Werner, who is sharing the banner with Hilda. Granted, Werner does come on a couple's banner, but the couple's banner is like four months away. As for the fifth bond, you need Florentia. And Florentia is also a very difficult hero to get. In terms of maximum stats, what you'll see is that the Grand Marshal has 215 more hit points than the Royal Knight class. It also has much less attack, but much more defense, and then much less magic defense. So it's a fine balance, if you will. The Soldier Boost is 20% hit points, 30% attack, 40% defense, and then 10% magic defense. So you can see that she is not all that tanky against magic in general, but she is very, very tanky against physical strikes, and she has pretty good attack increase on her soldiers overall. So it's an interesting soldier boost, that's for sure. The thing about Hilda is most P players for PvP will run her in the Grand Marshal Lancer class. This is because what you need to worry about at the end of the day is avoiding getting one-shotted. And the Grand Marshal class can very much help you avoid that by providing protection against SP Elwin. Right? There's a lot of cavalry enemies now, so the fact that you can be Lancer class is huge. Right? Just like how a lot of people are playing Landius in the Lancer class, it's the same situation here. And always keep in mind, you can always change classes if you need to, right, with the 3C skill. So people generally end up going for the Grand Marshal class. That way you start in Lancer, you can faction buff up, and then later, if you need to change into Cavalry, you can. By triggering her 3C. So, gear-wise then, these are some example sets. Because of the existence of SP Elwin, that has pretty much forced every tank to bring Blood Pact, and Blood Pact continues to be her best uh, accessory as a result, just like every other tank. In fact, what you're going to see here is her gear, her recommended gear in general, is basically identical to Landius. Right? You want Blood Pact for the accessory, you want Fury of Tear for the helmet, you're going to want a Aeolus armor or Bloodline Magic armor for the protection against ranged and physical strikes respectively. And then the weapon, depending on your class, is either a Ragnarok or a Dragon Slayer Gram. Oh, you can choose to replace the Ragnarok with the Throne Guardian. Throne Guardian gives an extra 5% hit points, which can increase the survivability once again. I would say in the case of Hilda, the Aeolus' battle armor will edge out the Bloodline Magic armor because she is far more worried about surviving, let's say, ranged attacks, the magic attacks, than she is the physical strikes, but given her extremely high defense already. And the other thing is, there is an upcoming armor for Lancers and Cavalry and Infantry that actually is a 30% trigger, but protects against all attacks, reducing them by 20%. So it's a less, it is a bit less than the 30% reduction that Aeolus and Bloodline Magic armor offer, but the fact that the upcoming armor protects against both ranged and physical, uh, both ranged and melee attacks, makes it a very, very good armor. And it's probably going to be the armor that replaces for every hero. So for enchants, I recommend pretty much Thorns, because that's the enchant that Landius is running. Right? Um, you can literally just move the gear from Landius to Hilda. <laughs> that's, it's just that simple. But you can run other enchants. Right? Uh, you can run Ice, for example. Theoretically, Ice would give you a chance to freeze anyone that attacks her, which can be very, very big. And in the early stages, you might even consider running Full Moon instead to maximize your stats. Right? Maximizing your stats in general means that you have more, like if you have more attack, you're gonna have more defense and magic defense as well, increasing your survivability greatly. So the older sets, the PPE sets I have listed as, for example, a set that dramatically increases your 
defense, right? Seal Guardian provides 5% defense increase. Wing Shin Guard provides 10% uh, defense increase, right? And an Aeolasis, once again, is a trigger to protect against magic attacks and so on. In Fear of Tear, gives you maximum damage output. In the early game, you would probably just equip what you can get. And all four items I've listed as the early game gear are all items you can get for, for free, right? There's a frost rend early on. There's an Aeolasis armor fairly early on. There's an Aeolasis helmet early on. And there's a wing shin guard fairly early on. I think all of these come at like level 30, 40, and 50 respectively. And finally, for the class mastery enchants, these ones really don't change from Landius. You're going to want to maximize attack, maximize defense, and maximize hit points. On the weapon and accessory slot, I do currently have listed skill. You can very easily replace those with another defense or magic defense enchant instead. Probably defense on both. So it's just about maximizing your uh, Hilda's ability to tank hits. That's more or less it. So finally, jumping into the game to talk a bit about her skills, you can see right now, my Hilda is not fully unlocked yet, so I don't have access to all her skills yet. But you can see she has a faction buff, the Light of Rebirth, it's a very interesting one because it gives all the reincarnation characters single target skill damage increase of 12%. So it gives all your single target strikers like Mariel, like Lolly Jess, you know, like Rosalia, they all do extra damage with their single target strikes. And reincarnation actually has a lot of single target strikers that is well worth mentioning. So we're looking at Renata, we're looking at Noemi, we're looking at Werner, we're looking at Rosalia, we're looking at Mariel, we're looking at Lolly Jess, we're even looking at Ares potentially, and Tsubami. So all of them would really benefit from that faction buff. You're going to, in general, you're going to want to bring her 3C, Crimson Command, right, as her guard skill. And then since you have one point left, as I mentioned, you could bring Ram, you could bring the Broken Spear, right? Broken Spear will increase your attack when you're entering battle through melee attack, and disable enemy weapon skills. So now, this can be very, very useful. Or alternatively, rather than Broken Spear, you can bring the other one point skill, Broken Arrow. Right? When forced into battle through a ranged attack, you get increased attack, damage taken is decreased, and you counter attack against ranged physical attackers if the attacker is within three blocks. So, a great, a very possible skill that you would bring as well, either over the Broken Spear. So you can see she has a lot of useful one-cost skills. Yeah. And finally, soldiers. Soldier-wise, you can see right now, these two right there are identical to the Landius. Royal Cavalry and Templar Knights, right? One counters physical damage, one counters magic damage with the 45% magic defense increase. But she does have access to a few other ones. The Lancer side, she has access to the Crystal Molders, and it's because she has Crystal Molders that Thorns Enchant is well worth bringing on her. And she has Phallic Soldiers. And the Phallic Soldiers, if you're attacking with her, then they ignore class disadvantage. So you can see she has three very defensively oriented soldiers, as well as one actually one that's more offensively oriented, but at the same time, it does get attack and defense increased, so it functions pretty well as a defensive soldier too. Once again, it means since these phallic soldiers get attack and defense increase, it means they are the physical uh, counter, and then the crystal molders, of course, are the magic counter, since they reflect magic damage. Oh, last but not least, she does also have access to phallic soldiers as well as stone colossus. So you can see she, has, she actually has four surprisingly viable lancer soldiers, with the landius cavalry soldiers on the side. Just, it's such a wide variety of useful soldiers. All right, so with all that covered about Hilda, let's now move into some battle demonstrations. The first scenario I wanted to demonstrate is something like that's actually against Werner. So we often see Rosenseal running Holy Pegasus, and it seems like a really weird build, right? Uh, the reason for Holy Pegasus is because flyers have two tech benefits. First of all, if the flyer is on defensive terrain, they will get 20% damage reduction effect. Second, if the flyer is in mixed forces, they get 20% defense and magic defense increased, right? 
So in this situation, the Holy Pegasus Frozen Seal is on the forest terrain, which gives 20% defense increase. So what you can say is the flyers, the holy pegasus, effectively have 40% defense increase and 20% damage reduction. So as a result of this, when Werner charges in with the ignore guard attack, Hilda, uh, Rosen Seal doesn't die. She just flat out tanked that hit. And it's not because of Rosen Seal herself, right? If we look at the stats of the two during the combat, let me see if I can go back far enough to display that. Right. We are looking at 1566 attack with 1.2 times damage against a mere 641 defense. There is no reason for Rosenseal to survive at a 1.2 times damage attack like this. So the result had to be because the mechanical knights of this player failed to kill the Holy Pegasus of Rosenseal. And because they failed to kill, Rosen, uh, Werner had to waste strikes on the soldiers and thus didn't have enough damage to kill Rosenseal, who survived with like 4,400 hit points. So with that survival, you know, I mean, this battle's already over for sure, but it was an interesting thing to see that Rosenseal, on terrain with Holy Pegasus, successfully tanked the hit from Werner. And if you had run Shrine Maidens without Meditation Rain, let's say, that would not have occurred. Now let's go to a full battle demonstration. This first battle has Hilda and Werner with Elwyn, Deedlit, and Lyanna versus Rotenseal, Ares, Juggler, Deedlit, and Zerida. So you have a single target strike team against uh, AoE and single target hybrid. Werner starts and there's a form change, I believe, to the mobility form. So that she has, he has eight mobility, and then he gets acted again, so that he can potentially go in for an assassination. So we can see here that he has mechanical knight, and look how far he can charge. Zerda triggers a faction buff to buff up juggler. And player 1 doesn't choose to send Werner in yet. Player 2, meanwhile, mobility buffs both Ares and Juggler with his Deedlet. Could act again due to Werner. So now Ares rapidly goes charging forth. So Ares triggers the Fearless Hurricane can now move all the way up to launch out his Wind Whisper, AoE damage, teleports, and some more AoEs. Now, huge stat check here, right? But if you have a properly enchanted and built Werner and Elwyn, who are physical damage dealers, they will survive that for sure. So they both survived, and Deedlet heals up Werner. Now, Juggler, who got mobility buff, gets to teleport in as well, and launch out her AoE. Or his AoE, sorry. And look at that, Werner survived it as well. So, massive stat check. There was a, definitely a hit point and defense survivability stat check. But, Werner was able to survive. So, turn order has changed here. Alright. And Ares tried to kill Deedlet and failed. So now, after two AoEs, the whole party of player 1 has survived. And in very many ways, you can say this battle is over right here, because it's already a 5v4, right? But the battle will continue for a bit. Werner continues to you know, do various, I guess, form changes. And Deedlet now attempts an attack on Hilda. Now, Hilda has changed to a cavalry class, so Deedlet would have absolutely no way of one-shotting this Hilda at this point. After all, infantry will never ever kill a cavalry character.
Meanwhile, so player two is just hovering around, you know, trying to do what damage he can, attack, retreat, that kind of stuff. Player one is just exploiting his advantage to survive. Just keeping characters healthy and not making any dangerous moves. And Zerna is not a bloodthirster one, so she just shadow raided. And now Werner gets to charge over 10 tiles and single target strike and kill Deedlin. Cavalry against infantry, easy kill. And then Deedlin jumps in, doing some damage to Juggler. At the very least, wiping out all the soldiers on Juggler. And they did enough damage so that Elwyn could Sword Soul and finish Juggler off. Side note, Juggler was forced to run those soldiers in large part because, well, Elwyn was in play. Right? With Elwyn on the battlefield, you have to pretty much, well, running the lobsters would have been super dangerous. So he ran Lancer soldiers to counter Elwyn, but then that just made them very vulnerable to damage to Deedlet, and then the follow-up attack from Elwyn finished it very easily. So we can kind of see that the AoE team did not do all that well here. Of course, keep in mind that player one did have both Deedlet for healing as well as Liana for healing. Now, battle number two that I want to demonstrate has Hilda on the team on the right. So once again, you see that think player one is running a very single target oriented team. Ares, SP Elwyn, Yulia, right? Landius is a tank with Waller. And then player two is running a mixed team, right? More AOE oriented because there is Arianrod and Reen, but there is also Yulia there, right? Arianrod, Reen, and Florentia are all AOE attackers. But there is, once again, Yulia mixed in. So let's see how this one plays out. Now, interestingly enough, Player 1's Ares is actually an infantry class. Not flyer, infantry. And Player 1 begins by the usual buffing Nothing too unique about a situation like this. And now, Ares, Fearless Hurricanes, charges the head, Noble charges, and instantly takes down the first life of Hilda. And that's the whole teleport thing, doing more damage, but Hilda survives. So the fact that Hilda healed up before combat allowed her, or healed up after reviving, allowed her to live. This was not a 50% heal uh, after battle. So this was not a six star Hilda for sure, but she did heal enough to survive the AoE attack of Ares. It was pretty darn close, but she lives. And since she survived, Florentia launches her AoE, which also heals, and Clocks triggered on it too. So, purposely did not heal Ariane Rod so that Ariane could trigger her act again. So Ariane Rod gets to launch out two attacks this way. And this double AoE wiped out both Yulia and Wilder. Look at that. So SP Elwin now runs in. And the SP Elwin Sword Soul attack takes down Yulia's first life and prevents her from healing. Hilda finally gets to trigger her guard skill, and she gets attacked by Ares. But when she activated her guard skill, she went into the cavalry class. So Hilda was able to tank that hit from Ares, even though Ares, yeah, because Ares was in the infantry class. And then Florentia provided additional healing. At that point, since the tank was alive, player one surrenders. 
there's not much you can do here. We're, Yulia is dead. Um, Wilder is dead, so there's no healer. Ares has used up all his skills and will not get any more healing. So he would have to try to rely on SP Elwin plus Landius to win this fight. And he just didn't think he could do it, so he just surrenders. Definitely, overall, pretty interesting, right? I mean, we saw a whole bunch of interaction very quickly, especially with, like, I mean, Hilda charging, or Ariane Rod charging in that early, stuff like that. But um, it very quickly went into the favor of player two. And that's in large part because Hilda was so tanky, despite not being a six star Hilda. The third and final battle I'm going to demonstrate will have Hilda on both sides. This battle is kind of interesting because actually both teams are running double tank. Player 1 has Hilda and Juggler, player 2 has Hilda and Emilia. Both teams also have Rosenseal deployed, and player 1 has Reen along with Lolly Jets, while player 2 has SP Elwin with Mario. So player 2 has a much better single target oriented party, although Lolly Jets is always a threat. Player 1 has a Royal Cavalry equipped, Hilda. And player two has Hilda with Templar Knights. Right. So, player one's Hilda is bringing strength in to buff up Reen, so that Reen has plus 20% attack. And both sides faction buff to start. So. This faction buff means that Lolly Jess is going to get an additional 12% damage. So now, Rosen Seal moves up now, and so does yeah, Rosen Seal on both sides moves up. So now, this is an interesting thing. The player 1's Hilda is not running the 3C, it's running the 2 cost skill to apply cannot act again effects. So we get to see it's a 2x5 block area, terrain effects in front of her. And now, Lolly Jess launches out her free strike, and it doesn't even go through the Templar Knights. That's how little damage it did. So it shows the Templar Knights with 765 match defense right, were super ridiculously tanky. And tanky to the point where that free strike attack of Lolly Jess didn't even go through them. Keep in mind that's sorceresses as well as Lolly Jess herself, right? All doing damage. Very significant. So, incremental movements from player 2 after having tanked that hit. Totally tanked it. And now Elwyn charges forward, sword souls, and absolutely crushes Juggler. Remember how I mentioned earlier that you know Juggler was running Stone Colossi to protect against Elwyn? That's why. Sword Soul, dispelling 5 buffs, easily allowed this SP Elwin to one-shot Juggler. SP Elwin gets one-shotted in return, but revives. And then after the revival, just moves back and heals up a little bit from being in Rosen Seal's range. Not sure why player 1 didn't try to launch an AoE, probably didn't think he would kill SP Elwin. But as a result, yeah. player 1 is down juggler without having killed anyone. Now, Mariel launches out her first attack. And we think she gets to act again, right? But because of the terrain effects, that blocked her act again. So because of the terrain effects laid down by Hilda, Mariel doesn't get to act again. But despite that, it's not going to really matter because for her next attack, she gets to ignore guard. Right? 
And so the second attack, the ignore guard strike, takes down Lolly Jess. It's now five against three. So it's totally over. But nonetheless, it was interesting to see the terrain effects come into play. But this is also why I said that the terrain effects, the act again prevention, isn't all that great. <laughs> nonetheless, I mean, the battle overall was pretty interesting. I think the key point was showing how tanky um, Hilda can be against magic strikes. Right? Given that she converts some of her attack, or she provides some of her attack into defense and magic defense, it really made those Templar Knights stupidly tanky against magic strikes. So that is it. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this video interesting and useful to you. And on that note, Nitro out.